Hello, good morning. Well, not good morning to you guys, but good morning to me. Anywho, hi guys, welcome back to another webisode. Let me put you down one second. Okay, we're back in my favorite little spot. Okay, so if you guys don't know me, my name is Elle. I'm an interior DIY blogger and YouTuber. If you already know all this stuff, hello, welcome back. We're coming in with a DIY webisode. So excited to bring this to you guys. You guys may have an idea of what this is if you have watched the previous um, webisode, um, which I will link down below. It's more of a vlog. It's a bit of a catch up after having a long break. Um, but you'll also know from the title of this that we are gonna be working on doing a DIY console for behind our new sofa. So I'm gonna be doing this completely DIY'd. Um, just because I just could not be bothered to buy something at retail price for the size that I'll need it's going to cost me and I know that I've got spare woods and stuff like that downstairs so I'm really just excited to kind of get on with this year why it's going to be a really good day it's sunny day but it's not too hot like yesterday it was absolutely boiling so it would be an absolute hell to do a DIY in that um, weather but it's pretty decent now so let me show you the situation and what I'm thinking design wise and then we'll go from there so if you missed the previous episode, this is the new sofa. It's looking a little bit, mm, I'm buying stuff to kind of fluff it up and also the covers all need washing, um, which I'm gonna do after I've shown you this bit. Um, oh, I've got an excitable puppy just playing with his fox. Um, so yeah, this is the situation set up. So if you kind of remember, again, if you're new here, you'll have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, but previously my sofa sat here, like the smaller one. Um, and then we had like a separation of, this was like the entryway, because uh, that's the front door, but we've never used that door. And hence why we're covering it up now. Um, and then yeah, the sofa would sit kind of here for the space that we, obviously the size of the sofa, we need to push it back um, and also take off the old radiator cover, which is what you can see there. So we've pulled the sofa a little bit away from the wall, which is perfect because it does create this sort of like illusion that the room is bigger than it is, but I really don't want it flush to the wall at all. And I think we just need like a very thin, um, maybe a little bit chunky looking, but not too like wide, um, Hopefully that made sense. Um, but we just need a little console table that runs the back that will hide the radiator um, and also just kind of give that illusion of depth more. I'm also thinking, if I go across here, that this bit will be covered with curtains. I think what I want to do is look at maybe making something, obviously not attached because that would just be too complicated, but just a small, thin something here that could just be like a drinks rest or something like that like I was thinking about maybe getting a small table but it's just not gonna work for this space so yeah we want something that's gonna not be higher than the sofa but will be somewhat a little bit higher I think we're gonna just probably come up to kind of the cushion level there um, and then yeah it'll be a nice little console that will hide the radiator um, and we'll just provide the space for decor, for drinks, anything like that, charging points because both of the plugs are behind there. I also need to have a look at if I move to the side. Okay, so it's hard to see because I've got this little standing moment here. I don't know why that's not put back correctly, but we'll sort that out in a bit. Um, but obviously I need to have a look at ensuring that there is gap for heat to come out so it's not just kind of trapping it in when we <laughs> turn the radiators on in the winter time so these are all kind of the design elements i need to look at um luckily the measurements are online because this is an ikea sofa so i can just measure out exactly how long i need it to be i think like i'm going to use as much scrap wood that i've got downstairs shop with what i've got because i've got lots of stuff downstairs but i do think for the top i want to get like a nice piece of kind of lived in vintagey wood just to that made no sense but i just want a little bit of like vintageness to this space because there's a lot of like ikea and new stuff going on we have a couple of vintage like facebook market things finds like the coffee table and then this side table here but i want i don't want it to look too kind of like modern if that makes sense the one there i'll probably just paint white because it'd be hidden it's really just for putting you know a drink on there and stuff but this one because you will kind of see it i kind of want to maybe get something like that has a bit of a lived in edge or something that i can vintify vintified vintage just kind of vintage it up there you go <laughs> much like kind of like what i did with my um diy stool makeover which i'll link down below if you're interested um so yeah my thinking is i'm going to probably create like two cubes 
um, maybe one big cube, but obviously have a brace in the middle because of how long it's going to be. Um, create sort of an outward frame and then stick the kind of more prettier thing on top. We also just need to move the mirror here because it's kind of going to be edging into the table, but that's something I will do another day. So let's take you downstairs to the workshop and see what we've got to play with in terms of wood. Okay, the light's a bit weird in here because there's a bulb just literally two centimeters from my head. Uh, but this is our cellar, our basement. Did a complete makeover in here, which I'll link down below if you're interested because that was a transformation and a half. Um, but as you can see, it's a storage space, but the main bit behind me is my little workshop with all my DIY tools and whatnot. Um, if you can hear any noise, by the way, this right above us is the living room and I can hear the puppy going crazy playing with stuff because I said he couldn't come down here with me. Um, so apologies if you can hear any background noise. So as you can see, I have a lot of like wood that's left over um, that has just been kind of from projects that have just been scraps and leftovers and whatnot. So I'm gonna go and shop and see like what I've got that I could use that will help me save some money because to get a really nice piece of wood um, that length, um, it's gonna cost me something. So we need to see what we've got left over. Okay, so I've got you guys. Okay, so I've got these two bits, which are they roughly the same length? They're exactly the same width. So that'll probably be good for maybe the sides. Yeah, I think maybe the sides, this will be good. It's one of those things where I don't think necessarily people are gonna see the sides, obviously like they will do if you're coming from down the stairs, but I'm not so bothered about that looking too pristine and perfect uh, because we'll always have some form of like table covering it or something like that. But genuinely, um, I can always use something like, I've got, oh, this is a long bit can't quite move this bit over here because it's kind of washed in because it's like the lump of the room but I have a lot of like this stuff that I could easily just like cover and paint to kind of cover everything up but I do obviously need a little bit of a gap for ventilation for the heat and stuff so these two could be perfect for the side you are slightly wider um but perhaps if I got another one of these then I'd have, probably need two of these. We've got a sticker, we've got a sticker guys. So these are plain smooth timber, 18 mil uh, thickness. So that's one and a half, just over one and a half centimeters. I'm not sure what that is in inches, apologies. Um, 119 in width, so 11.9 centimetres, and then this was 2,400, so it was 240 centimetres long. Um, so I'll take that sticker with me and see if we can find its buddy. Um, and I think, yeah, we get like, that's a good thickness, I think, like to have the table be. And then if we did go for something like this, uh, ooh, <laughs> this one which is same thickness but it's 144 um, millimeters wide that's kind of like a nice depth so it's a little bit of overhang but that's a nice little depth to have I think as well this is again 244 centimeters I think this actually might be from the stool makeover um, so I could do could do the two like that yeah because I think it, I won't be able to fit like a full length one in my car I might be able to get them to cut it to what I need so then at least the top is done so maybe we can use this as the just thinking yeah we probably could use this as the kind of bottom piece as such we'll see anyway so we've got some good thick pieces of wood that we can use um like I said we've got leftover like hardwood that can cover things that can be painted nice bit of mdf which i think is pretty much the it's just a bit higher but i can certainly um cut it and then that will be pretty much the side covered and i can paint it and then we have oh i did not spot you over there okay we have this random stick here that i didn't even know was in the like corner um but that would be a pretty good middle brace 
um, just to, you know, hold everything. Um, I probably could do two braces actually, so then it'd be super solid. So we've got that as well. Oh, there's another bit of hardboard up there, so that can be used. And there's another bit of like MDF. And there's this bad boy in the corner, which I think is left over for some of the legs. It's not the same length, but again, we've got some good stuff. Um, just thinking if there's anything else we need down here. I am going to say that this is what is good for now. Let's take this upstairs, let's go grab my notebook, let's get drawing what I'm thinking we need and then we can do some measurements and stuff and then yeah, I think we definitely need to go shopping but we've got a good amount which means we're not going to spend too much money, we're going to keep this cheap. away I kind of hope you can see this but if you by the way want ever want an in inside to what my brain looks like when it comes to content creation DIYs etc this is the book you need to have a look into um, so I am basically I've got the idea this is going to be pretty simple to do I've also decided that I'm not necessarily going to paint it I'm going to stain it um, I'm not sure what stain I'm going to go for that is still up in the air but I think definitely using a much of the plywood and natural wood as possible rather than the MDF so that it is stainable is going to help me create that kind of vintage look in my home. So I have to give full credit for this inspiration to Jenna Sue. When I was on Pinterest I was looking at kind of like you know console tables behind sofas. Her post popped up and what she did popped up so I'm going to link her blog post down below for anyone that is interested in the sort of frame that I'm looking at. I am going to do it with a bit of a twist. So essentially what she did was do kind of like um, pieces of wood much thicker than this like frame it like that like that so it was almost like kind of a cube on a cube on a cube on a cube that made up two like cubes and then she put like a flat piece of wood on top and then that's what she did there. She also inspired me to, instead of painting it, just to stain it because hers was staying quite a nice dark colour. I'm not sure if I will go dark, but we've got time to make that decision, so we're not gonna rush into that. I'm gonna do somewhat similar, but tweak it slightly. So essentially, I'm gonna use this as like my inspo. So this is gonna be the thickness of it. It's not gonna be the overall because I think I'm gonna go for something just a little bit wider in thickness on top, um, but for the main frame, that's going to be the thickness of it. So it's going to be a skinny one, but it's going to be enough to just have something and decorate with. So essentially, I'm going to have one piece like this, another one like this, one on top, and then that way we can screw in the middle, kind of the finishing board, and then one like this. And that's going to be one cube. And then the second cube is going to have the same bottom. Obviously, it's going to attach to the side. So we're kind of doing like a C shape. Um, so it will have like top, bottom. It will attach to the other piece that's like this. But we're going to open it so that we have access to the radiator and also some form of grid that can um, ventilate it. So obviously, I've got these two pieces of wood, which will make up one cube. So we've saved some money there, which is excellent. We've got this piece of wood, which where is my arrow that I drew? There we go. So it will essentially look out that way um, using that thickness, but we'll just basically attach it to the bottom like there. So screw in there into the flat bottom that will be this piece of wood. So essentially we're coming in like this <laughs> and then that will leave like one there one there and then we'll have one of those on top that will leave a gap here and like i said it's for ventilation and it's for kind of just accessing the radiator if we do need to access the radiator of course we can pull the piece out but easy access all around so it's kind of thinking about how can we ventilate it so that we're not trapping the heat we're not creating a cold room because this room can get very cold in the winter and what I remembered was, I do have some of 
this left over. So this is cane webbing. I bought a massive roll of this for our utility makeover. I'll link it down below. There is a lot of linking down below for kind of catch up and just other DIYs that you may be interested in. But essentially when I was doing our laundry room makeover, I needed to create some form of screen to cover up our boiler so that I didn't have to look at it every day. But also it had to ventilate because you can't just trap in a boiler, it needs some form of ventilation. Um, and this was like a really cool idea of like creating a bit of, um, you know, ventilation, but also kind of in keeping with my vintage style, etc., etc. So I've had like, a fair bit of this left over um, and essentially all you need to do is soak this for quite a bit, um, 24 hours and then you just easily staple it in which is what I've got and then what I was thinking of doing was I found that I had these left over I'm not even sure what project this was for but they're all the correct height for what I need the console table to be so I only need to make one short one but essentially what I was thinking of doing was I could definitely like glue it and then just maybe even put like a small little pin just to hold everything in place. But if I created like a little frame that then had this in the middle and then I could, I don't think I'd be able to get like a knob on there but I think this would be enough to just like pull on and off. I think somewhere in the depths of the DIY cupboard, I have leftover magnets that I use for the laundry room. So essentially it's just this like kind of white little box with a magnet on it and it just easily clicks on and off. And I figured I could use those on the main frame and then that way it will have a very pretty thing. It won't show off the radiator, which is excellent. And then if we need to access the radiator to, you know, adjust temperatures or anything, we pull it off and put it on again. And I thought that would be perfect. So I've got my sticker for exactly what I need. The measurements that I need to buy is I need a 205 centimeter or 2050, Math ain't my strong point, um, but 250 centimeter long piece of decorative that's going to be the bit on top that I'm going to use my kind of classic distress methods to do. Nothing too distressed, but a little bit. So this will be a slight hangover of like the frame, which is fine. Um, so I definitely can fit that in my little car um, at that length. I then need to get. Um, two more 81 centimeters which is the top and bottom of the kind of the outward facing cube which is the one that's going to be more on show um i've already got like i said enough wood to do the 98 centimeter ones which are going to be the ones that are going to be hidden and then i need to get two of the 80 centimeters which are going to form the middle bracket and then the bracket at the end that no one's ever going to see so there is some bits of wood left over but like i said i'm going to be making like a very small cube side table which i'm probably going to just do off camera it's going to be very similar to what i did again in the laundry room which i'll link down below um kind of cube that i did like a cubby hole just to cover up the radiator so it's just going to be a very quick simple diy that like i said i probably will just paint white or maybe i'll actually use some of the strip wood up and kind of keep it natural that's another DIY for another day. If you do actually want me to do that DIY like on camera, let me know in the comments below and I will fit it into the schedule. So yeah, it's gonna be a fairly interesting one. It's really funny because Jenna Sue's uh, blog post says about making this under $30, which is probably about 30 quid here in the UK, maybe about 40-ish. I'm not sure of the current exchange rate, but I have a feeling that even these pieces of wood are gonna cost me like 30 pounds just for the leftovers that aren't going to completely make up the console table so really kind of right now i would say you're making this concert console table with the pieces that i've already got from other projects i would say it's going to cost about in total with staining 60 to 80 quid basically so we are still saving a massive amount because we had it left over but just to kind of be honest and upfront with you guys like at the moment wood is ridiculously expensive in the cost of living crisis so this is not a cheap project it is certainly going to be much cheaper than buying i mean imagine getting almost a two meter console tape or for 80 quid it's just not possible so you're still saving a lot of money than if you bought it retail but i'm not going to lie to you guys and say oh this is like a cheap and affordable way it's certainly going to be expensive so let me go and grab my bag, let me pack my trusty tape measure, take all my stuff with me. We're going to head to the local DIY store, pick up these bits, and then we are going to crack on making the frame.
Okay, oh my god, I look like a hot sweaty mess. So, I've done the frame and I've just tested it out in the room. I think it looks absolutely perfect. Um, yeah, it's looking really, really nice. The only thing I'm a bit concerned about is, is that have I made it a bit too high for what I want it to be? Um, but I, I can't really tell because like the sofa's not covered properly and whatnot. So it doesn't look quite right yet, but I'm wondering once I put the covers on and like push everything back, it'll be fine. And the other thing I'm quite happy about as well is that the wood that I got to go on top, if I keep it flush, it's gonna be a great kind of like cover up of the radiator which is great um so yeah it's kind of coming all together really really nicely um again just in terms of have i gone too high at the top that you're going to see some stuff at the front possibly but i've got plenty of like wood left over that if i needed to maybe even create like a hidden bit i can do that so that's absolutely fine so what i'm going to do now is attach the big piece to well the brackets together then the big piece and then we should good to go Oh my god, sorry, it's really hot in here, like, and it's like raining outside, which is really annoying because I have washing that needs to dry, uh, but it's also warm. It, you can tell there's like an atmospheric feeling in the air. Um, so yeah, back to the kitchen. Hopefully we can kind of get it all um, kind of completed in the kitchen and then literally try and manoeuvre into that situation and then we're going to have to rearrange the rug and everything like that, but you don't need to know that. Um, and then yeah, I think once that's kind of done, Sit with it see how i feel about um, it in the space in terms of like do a bit more research and then i think next week we'll go into kind of staining it and then styling it and then we'll be done um so yeah let's go and put this together built the frame which I'm particularly happy about because it fits perfectly and I have the um oh my god I've forgotten the name of it now cane webbing there we go the cane webbing is um, upstairs taking a bath so that will be able to be stapled in tomorrow and this should be completed after this step so we're here to stay in this the good thing about this is, is I'm only doing the top of it I don't have to worry about the inside structure at all which is great um, and then this little bit we are running out of counter space in order to do this it is far too warm to do this outside today so I will be doing this main bit inside just being very very careful maybe shutting it off to the puppy <laughs> and then this piece because I don't have any counter space at all I'm going to do outside and leave it to dry the finish I've gone for is a wood dye 
and they've gone for American Walnut. Um, Lee mentioned he wanted it to match up to our vintage side table that we uh, thrifted ages ago and I wanted to make sure that we went for, if we were going dark, I wanted to go for warmth. So I've gone with the wood dye here. I also have furniture cloths. Um, this stuff is relatively easy to do. It penetrates the wood so you're going to see all that grain which is great. You only have to leave one hour between coats so it recommends two to three so we'll see how we go how easy it soaks it up i think because it's a pine and it's sawn it's going to do it really really well so i think after two we should be fine and i'm literally just going to wipe with one cloth and then the other one take off the excess just to make sure we get that nice green movement and whatnot and then the project is finished once I staple on the King Web in and we're all done. So let me get you set up somewhere else and let's get staining this. Also, before any of you go, why is she wearing a white shirt to do this? This is my DIY shirt. If you can't see, there are loads of different stains that just haven't come out in the wash. So this is officially my DIY shirt. Okay, let's get you set up. Okay guys, it is a week or so later since I last spoke to you guys. Um, unfortunately, the cane webbing that I was going to use for the side panel to conceal the radiator was just a tad too short and there was no way for me to make it work. So I had to basically order some new stuff which just literally came today. So I have installed it by basically using my staple gum, which I absolutely love, and it is all done now. So the project is completed. So let's show you the final console table in its new home in three, two, one I am so in love with this DIY. You're currently rested on it, which is great. I've got new filming locations now just to sit and talk to you guys, but I absolutely love it. I think it is just gorgeous. I can't believe how lovely the stain color came out on this thing. It's just adding such a lovely warmth and depth to the room. Like. I'm absolutely loving it. I still have a lot to do in this room in terms of decor. Certainly I need to find some gorgeous new pieces to decorate this console table with. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on next week's uh, webisode, which will just be a decor DIY vlog. We're gonna be looking at getting some new artwork in this space. So make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out on that episode. And it, I also need to do things like stuff the sofa just so it looks a bit more plumper and can hide sort of the exposed side of the console table. So make sure you go and check out my blog. It, the link is down below and editedlifestyle.com and I'll have a full tutorial on how you can stuff your sofa to make it look brand new again for hardly any of the cost. I hope you do enjoy this DIY. It's such a super simple and easy DIY to do. I feel like anyone can do it. And I think if you're looking just for like a gap filler or something uh, just to hide behind a sofa or something like that, this is the perfect DIY project for you guys. So I'm going to leave you guys here. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, do let me know if you give this DIY a go and how you get on. Have a lovely rest of your day. Have a lovely rest of your week. I'll see you guys very, very soon. Bye.